In this episode, we'll powder coat some lead bullets so they can go from this to this. Hi folks, I'm Custom Chess for Roma Custom Bike and this episode will be a little bit off topic, but I'm sure you like it. Today I'd like to explore two different techniques of powder coating that do not require the use of an electrostatic gun. Because of the subject matter, I'd like to remind you that this video is for entertaining purposes only and in no way an invitation to replicate my actions at all. Yo, ask the lawyer if that was alright. Disclaimer alright? Alright. Let's get started then. By managing vernicapolvere.it, my Italian powder coating company, in the last few months I've received many inquiries about powder coating bullets. For those of you not familiar with firearms, I'm referring to that part of the ammo that is actually shot out of the gun or rifle. Here it is. So, I documented myself and I found out the lead bullets tend to let up the barrel of the gun, forcing the gunman to spend lots of time in tedious cleaning operations. Moreover, the lead tends to make a lot of smoke and smell, and finally it exposes the shooter to lead contamination that, as we know now, is not really the healthiest thing in this world. Over time, many systems have been developed to prevent these problems, including full metal jackets or grease and oil lubrication. Today, however, the powder coating of the bullet is a viable and economical alternative to prevent these problems, sealing the lead inside a thin coating of very hard plastic. So, in this video, we'll use two different techniques for powder coating that do not require the use of an electrostatic gun. I'll be using the powders that you can find on our site, verniciapolvere.it, which supplies professionals and hobbyists with small quantities of powder. This bag, for example, costs only 13 euros and can provide coating for about 4,000 rounds of ammo, so a pretty good deal. But I've mentioned two techniques, the first one is a wet one and the second one is a dry one. The wet one will require some acetone, a container where we'll mix the acetone with some uh, powder for powder coating. We have the bullets that we want to paint, we have a tray made out of mesh that we'll use to put the bullets in the oven to bake. We have another container that we'll use to mix bullets and paint and the small oven. I've decided to use this oven to demonstrate how a very cheap oven can work for this purpose and can be a dedicated oven because once you use uh, this machine for powder coating you can no longer use it for food because it would be toxic. So let's get started and let's see how it goes. First of all, I need to remove the grease that is already present on the store-bought bullets. This step probably won't be necessary for those of you that fuse your own ammo. Powder coating, like most painting processes, do not like grease. To do so, it's enough to put them in an oven at about 80 degrees Celsius, 180 Fahrenheit, for a couple of minutes so it will melt away. While still plenty warm, I rinse the bullets with some acetone to obtain a clean surface ready to be powder coated. This step is valid for both processes. Now I can start preparing the paint mixture that I'll use to coat the bullets. All I need is about 15 grams of powder that can easily be measured with a common kitchen scale. And then just about 50 milliliters of acetone. I'll use this graduated container to measure it out. Then I mix it with the powder paint. While giving it a vigorous shake, I realize that the acetone is eating away at the plastic container. Better use some glass for this solvent. I quickly transferred the mixture to a cleaned-out marble jar and I'm back in business. 
back to the shaking. After mixing the ingredients together, I obtain a suspension of powder in a highly volatile liquid solvent. Just the way I like it. Watch out though, no flames around. Now I can use this mixture to paint the bullets, and that is why they are often referred to as colored bullets. The fact that this container is made out of plastic doesn't worry me. To coat this handful of bullets, I'll just need a few teaspoons full of paint. As soon as I pour, I need to get shaking right away. The acetone evaporates pretty quickly, so I've got little time to act. The paint covers the bullets pretty good, and once the solvent has evaporated, all that's left is the powder. So the bullets are transferred onto a mesh tray, and as you can see, the coverage is quite spotty. But it doesn't matter, it will be okay in the next few steps. The oven is on, and it's already at 200 degrees Celsius, 400 Fahrenheit. I can proceed with the first round of baking. I set the timer at about 5 minutes, and 3 minutes in, when the powder has already melted, I give it a shake to make sure that the bullets aren't sticking together too much. 5 minutes is a long time to wait, when curiosity is driving you nuts. The bullets are very hot, they now need to cool off for a few minutes. But it doesn't take that long, because they're just a few and they're tiny. So after 5 minutes, they're ok to touch. As you can see, they're not fully covered with paint, and that is why I will need to repeat the process for another couple of times, just 2 or 3. I have to make a compromise between the look of it and the thickness each coat adds to the bullet. The good thing is that with this technique, the thickness of each layer of paint is so small that even 4 coats are ok. So I start the process again, using bullets that are still warm to facilitate the adhesion of the powder, but watch out, if they are too hot, it will end up in a mucky mess. Let's go with the bake session number 2. You can see that the paint coverage is already much better than before, but still, let's give it a third coat. Since this is the last curing cycle, I will leave the bullets in for the full 10 minutes, just as stated on the powder bag, so that I can be sure that all the layers have fully cured. After a short wait, the bullets are ready to be handled. Well, <laughs> almost ready. You know, I'm sure that you guys will certainly have so much more patience and you will wait so you won't get burned, right? Yeah, yeah, I believe so. But anyway, I have to say that I'm very happy with the results. I can still see a few markings where the bullets were in contact with the net, but I'm sure that with a little bit of practice, the process can be refined a great deal. Here you can see the comparison between the before and the after. Now, before getting to the second technique, I'd like to remind you that if you're in Europe, you can find all the powders used in this video on our site, www.verniciapolvere.it. I will also write it in the description. I would also like to thank you guys for the support you demonstrate every day by liking our videos, by commenting and sharing on your social networks. If you aren't already, please subscribe to the channel and remember to click the little bell to receive a notification every time I publish a new video. Here comes the second technique, the dry one, maybe the simpler one. We'll need a Tupperware container where we'll mix bullets and paint, and then we'll dump everything onto our mesh tray, and we'll use some aluminum foil to recoup the extra paint and recycle it for the next painting job. And then everything will go into our little, tiny, dedicated oven. So let's get started with technique number two, and let's see what kind of results we can get. I've tried to use only easy to find materials for this project. For example, to collect the extra powder so that it can be reused many times, all I need is a sheet of aluminum foil to be placed under the mesh tray. Then, with the bullets already placed into the container, I add a little powder, just enough to cover them with a thin layer of color. Now, all that is required is a good shake to distribute the powder evenly on the lead bullets. 
Again, if you have them at the temperature of about 130, 150 degrees Fahrenheit, it will be easier for the paint to stick. I'm sure that with a little trial and error, anyone can find the perfect combo to get the best results. Once covered with paint, I transfer the bullet to the tray where the excess powder is free to fall through the mesh. My oven is always ready for baking. Today's chef's suggestion is Roman style bullets. Cooking time, 5 minutes! The extra paint can be put back in the bag and reused without any additional steps. This makes it so that this process has practically zero waste of powder. After five minutes, lunch <laughs> is ready and the smell... Mmm, the smell is just delicious. But you've got to keep your temperatures in check. You just cannot trust the little oven's thermostat. And that is why I like to use a laser thermometer. In this case, I got distracted while talking to you, may I add? Huh? And I lost track of my temperatures. The consequence is that the bullets melted away. <laughs> what you gonna do? But I never give up. With the magic of post-production, I'm back in a Jifu with a new batch of bullets. And this time, I won't let you guys distract me. Oh no, I'm gonna keep an eye on the temperature. This is the result from just one round of painting. Yeah, you can still see some markings from the mesh or where the bullets touch each other, but I have to say, it all looks pretty good for now. With one more layer, we should get a pretty decent product. Without letting the bullets cool off too much, I go for a second powdering round. As you can see, you need very little powder. The net captures the bullets and lets through the excess powder. If we didn't do this step, it could result in an uneven coating or too thick of a layer of paint. Once again, they're back in the oven and in very little time we can finally see the final result for this second bullet coating technique. As you can see, with only two layers of paint, we have a much better coverage than with the same amount of layers on the previous technique. We do have a bit more of visible marking from both the net and from the bullet-to-bullet -bullet contact, but although the look factor is definitely important, we can certainly assess that the objective of encapsulating the lead bullet in plastic has been achieved. Mission accomplished! And here they are, our powder-coated bullets. Now it's time to press them into the casing. You can see that my casing are just for show. There is no powder and there is no primer. I just want to see how does the final product will look once done. I borrowed this press from a good friend of mine that can put together a cartridge with a simple pushing of this lever. All you need to do is line up the bullet with the casing and voila! Here is your pretty bullet, nice and easy. I think I like this thing, I'm gonna make some more. We 
managed to powder coat these bullets and I'm pretty excited about the results. Now, I am no expert, so I'm sure that you guys will be able to get the best procedure in place to get some top results out of this powder coating technique. All I wanted to do is to prove that it was possible and it was as easy as everyone makes it out to be. Now, I invite you to subscribe to the channel, press the like button and check out some of the other videos in my series. I'm Custom Chess for Roma Custom Bike and I'll see you in the next video. We'll <laughs>